Hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Chris. I'm a statistics tutor at Broward Teaching Center. Uh, this is the second statistics packet. Packet B is kind of for like the second third of the course. Interesting stuff. It kind of covers ANOVA, regression, multiple regression, R squared, prediction intervals, things like that. We're going to kind of try to do all that stuff. Um, and before we start, uh, this stuff seems a little more daunting than before. However, in my opinion, and hopefully you will see this as well, is that it once you kind of get the hang of it, it, it kind of comes easier. It's more about interpreting and less about plugging in numbers, doing things like that. So once you get the definitions down and once you get to how to, to, uh, how to interpret the information that you're being given, it becomes it becomes quite easy. So I don't fret if you are confused about a lot of this stuff to, from the beginning. Okay, we will start. Okay, for part one, we're getting an uh, an R output, which is kind of like uh, mini tab or whatever, and it asks you one A, and it asks you to test whether or not x one x two or their interaction is significant. Okay. Now, if you look on your if you look on your output, it gives you. I'll kind of just do a little bit of a rough rough sketch. I'll just include the things that we are working with right now. Estimate. Got your intercept. X one. X two. X3, X1, X2, X1, X3. We have your coefficient. Now remember, this is your coefficient in front of the estimate, okay? So it goes your coefficient in front multiplied by the estimate, whatever estimate you're talking about, and then uh, uh, and that is what you would see in the regression equation if you were to write it out. And I'll write out this whole table for this question and then for the other questions I'm not going to write it out, but you'll have it in front of you. Um, and in case anyone is wondering, this is an actual R output that I created from one of my classes. So it is a real life example of what this actually looks like when people are really doing this. Um, so that's kind of nifty, right? OK, let's see. Then we have, now because these standard errors are the same, it doesn't really mean anything. Uh, there's, this, there's this one reason or another. The math could have worked out. So don't, don't really. Uh, put any significance to that. That's this kind of equation worked out in this particular instance. OK, now also remember that this output, you might be, it might be on your test, you might be working on it, you might forget what these things mean, OK? Now, that's OK. But just remember, this output is printed out to be useful to you, to make it really easy to understand. Um, so if you forget what each individual part means, just remember what would be useful in this situation. What, would, what, is, what is useful for a regression equation besides the coefficient itself, the standard error, and the t-value? OK, so what these t-values are is, remember, this is the t-value not like some critical t value. This is the t value for testing whether or not this individual, remember these are, these are like beta i, and this one's alpha, this one's uh, a. OK? Or, I'm sorry, this is bi. And they're estimating beta i and alpha. And so what, we're, what, this, what this t value is, is it's testing the hypothesis of whether or not this value, the true value beta i or alpha, 
is zero, okay? So really what you're interested in is if you do this thing, divide by this, you're going to get this. Easy as that. So this is a t-value, and there's also a p-value column, but uh, I'll write that up as time goes on. Okay, so what we're doing in A is we're testing whether or not uh, x, x1 and x2 are significant. And what does that mean? We're testing for significance. That means we're testing whether or not, I'll just do x1 first. So we're testing if beta1 equals 0 or beta1 uh, does not equal 0. Okay, how do we do that? We do our b1 minus the, the, the null value, which is 0, divided by standard error of b1. But oh, look. That's just b1 divided by standard error. 2, 6 divided by, oh, wrong way, negative 0 0.2034, 0, 4, divided by 0 0.126, and we get negative 1.606, OK? And the p-value for that would be 0.11. And that implies that the p-value equals 0 0.11. OK, now we're going to do the other hypothesis. Beta 2 equals 0. Beta 2, e oh. yeah, 2 does not equal 0. In case anyone was wondering, this was some regression to see, what was it? Uh, it was to see if the genre of movie affected whether or not people could remember the ad that the ad placements they saw. And they did a, it was a regression with uh, gender and movie genre. So it's pretty interesting. What is that? Let's see. And now we're doing the b0 value, or I'm sorry, b2. Let's see, 0.174. What does that equal? All you have to do, they already did the division for you, so it's negative 2.340. And that is the, that p value equals 0 0.02. So, OK. So, what does that mean? That means from the p-value, based on some, like, uh, most, most often it's 0.05. If it's, not, if it's not told to you what alpha is, it's 0.05. It's a general thing. So we know that this one is not significant, and this one is, because it's less than 0.05. Easy as that. Um, and then we'll test their interaction, which is x1, x2. That's their interaction. So we have, we want beta 4. We want to know if it's 0 or if it's likely that it's not 0. OK, and we just do this divided by this, and we get 0.456. This is not, this is not uh, significant, as it's way, and the p-value is, what is that, 0.649. So it's way above 0 0.05, so it's not significant. So these are our conclusions. Okay, so what we know is only beta two is significant in all the in, in that whole that whole situation. Okay, now this this graph tells us more than that, though, or this little graphic, whatever you want to call it, it tells us actually the exact regression equation. Because remember, we have one, two, three, four, five, six predictors, so the general equation is y equals alpha plus beta one x one plus beta 2 x2 plus beta 3 x3 plus beta 4 x1 x2 plus beta 5 uh, x1 x3, OK, plus epsilon. That's the general. This is the general equation. This is what we're trying to predict with this equation. OK, now we, but now we have the coefficient values. These are the values that we're plugging in. So we can just plug in for each of them. Super nifty, super useful. And then epsilon uh, has an expected value of 0. So it, 
it drops out of the equation. And we, if for each observation we have a residual, but we don't, uh, we don't have an epsilon in the general in this in our predicted equation. So we have four point zero six plus. Actually, it's minus zero point two minus zero point four plus. Oh, this is point zero seven, right? Yeah, it is. Sorry, guys. Point zero seven x three plus point zero seven nine x one x two. Then you have minus point zero five seven point zero five seven x one x three. Okay, this is, this is a regression equation. Not too bad. You just I just took all these components, plugged them in. That's the regression equation. And that's why this is a useful program, because it tells you what you want, and it tells you in a really easy fashion. It tells you all the things that you'd care about in that situation. So that's great. OK, now we're on part C. OK, so um, we want a confidence interval for x for, for I guess, beta 1 and beta 2. I, it says on the thing x1 and x2, but that kind of is implied that it's beta 1, beta 2. So ci beta 1. 95% confidence interval for beta 1. So we do negative uh, 0.20304 plus or minus. Um, and OK, so since this, since this whole study was based off 137 people, We can use the z value because the central limit theorem kicks in. So we do uh, z 0 0.0502 times a standard error of 0.126. And that equals, what does that equal? That equals negative 0 0.450820 to 0. Point zero four four seven. Okay. And now our confidence interval for beta two uh, is just the same kind of setup. Also, sorry, this is one point nine six, as you guys probably know. This is the alpha over two C of point zero five over two is always one point nine six. So now we have negative zero point four zero seven three one plus or minus 1.96 times the standard error of 0.174. And that equals 0.748448 comma negative 0.06172. OK, now we have our confidence intervals. OK, so notice this one passes. This is from negative to positive, And this one is negative to negative. OK? This one includes 0. This one passes through 0. So it's a possible value. So remember, the confidence interval is the set of plausible values for, for beta 1. So 0 is a plausible value. Therefore, we fail to reject, and that's exactly what we did before, so that supports our conclusion. And the same thing here, negative to negative doesn't it include 0, so it supports our conclusion of not, of uh, thinking it's not 0. OK. Great. And that's the end of question 1. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.